Alrighty guys, the main objective for today is to make a little bit more headway on the 6 liter LQ4 swap that we're doing in this 98 Jeep Cherokee XJ. My name's LT and on this channel we build custom and high performance trucks and apparently off-road vehicles as well. So if any of that content appeals to you, help me out and hit that subscribe button because we're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2021. And I know we can make it happen, I just need your help. So in the last upload, I showed you guys what it takes to install a Jeep NP231 transfer case behind this GM4 L60, and it's a fairly simple conversion. More or less, you're just swapping out the input shaft, but I didn't finish up the transfer case build last time simply because the oil pump was shot and I was waiting for another one to show up. Now it did show up this morning and I've got it installed. The transfer case is sealed back up and it's back underneath the Jeep. So the drivetrain is in its final position, but I just wanted to show you the reason why we didn't put the oil pump in. The pickup tube right here is cracked where the O-ring seals. And then finally the seal on the backside right there, if that camera will focus, is totally non-existent. So that would lead to a lack of lubrication of the transfer case. So for 50 bucks is well worth the extra effort and a couple of days wait just to swap it out with a new one. So anyway, drive trains in and that means today I need to find something else to do. I think the next major part that I'd like to knock off the checklist is building the exhaust. But obviously I need to get the headers on the engine before I can start doing an exhaust. And since I'm going to be under the hood, I might as well throw the coils back on, the plug wires, and just see what other easy components I can mount, and that way I'll just have a better idea of what I need to build around later on. Uh, the exhaust obviously is very important to get in pretty soon in a project because there's a lot of stuff that you need to put in place that avoids the hot exhaust. You know, the transmission cooler lines, the fuel lines, obviously you want those pretty darn far away from anything that gets hot. Also, because we're going to be wiring an EFI set up in here, it'll be obviously nice to have the O2 bungs in place. So uh, today we'll just get started on the headers, get the engine stuff in, and I'll see if there's any other simple, you know, odd and end parts that I can bolt in just to kind of dress this thing out a little bit more. And then we'll see what we have time left to finish up. So we got a bunch of stuff mounted and it's starting to look more and more like a functioning engine bay. 
First thing we did was throw the headers in on the uh, driver's side, actually. There's plenty of room once it's installed, but because of the shape of the steering shaft, you do have to install the header from underneath. On the passenger side, there's plenty of room to slip the header down from the top, and as far as the clearance around the plug wire, sometimes that's iffy with headers. Uh, everything here is pretty good. Cylinder number four, um, it's really close. The boot is almost touching the primary, but he got these nice ceramic coated uh, plug boots and he heat wrapped the header. So I don't think we're gonna have any problems with that arcing out. Um, if in the future there are uh, problems, we'll just get one of those 45 degree plug boots and we'll be golden. Every other cylinder has a mile of clearance. Uh, let's see, I did have to rework the dipstick on this side. I think this was a truck dipstick he provided. I had to cut that bracket there and kind of shorten it a little bit and then retweak the angle of the bend just so we have adequate hood clearance. Um, I am glad that we moved the engine to the forwardmost position. There's, remember, three spots you can mount the engine, and it's only about an inch and a half, maybe, of total travel that you have. But the headers, they're really tight on the back, or specifically the passenger side is. It's, got, it's not going to be a problem at all, but if I were any further back, you know, it definitely might be close to rubbing. And it looks, it's kind of hard to tell from up here, so I'll put a shot down below but I've got about a finger's width of clearance between the tip of the collector and the frame rail there. But like I said, just further to the front definitely helps things out. Uh, over on this side, like I said, there's a mile of clearance around the plug boots. And I think the next thing that I'm gonna tackle is just getting the hood shut. Remember, this throttle body here is gonna interfere with the inner structure of the hood. I kind of marked that up, so I'll you know, make a nice straight line on there and see if I can very, very carefully cut this out without touching the inside of the hood, because obviously that would be a bad thing.
So probably the most nervous that I've been working on a car in a very long time is doing stuff like I did right here today, is cutting apart you know, some sheet metal that is very, very close to an outside panel, something that you do not want to damage. I didn't even want to nick the skin of the hood because if you get a grinder on the back of it, just for a second, it can heat the metal up, which could eventually, you know, bubble the paint on the outside. So even if you don't actually physically cut through the second layer of the hood, just having a little bit of heat on there could damage some paint. Um, so one thing I've learned over the years is keep a couple of inexpensive sacrificial tools on hand and a putty knife worked perfectly. I think I grabbed this one from Walmart a long time ago when we're doing a remodeling project. And you can see there's a couple of nicks on there where I was using the grinder, but luckily it fits perfectly. It's very thin. It fits right in between the structure and the skin of the hood. So I can get that grinder in there all day long and not worry about, I mean, if I get too crazy, obviously I could cut through this and into the hood, but um, just keep something like this around. That way you'll protect the sheet metal. There's no risk of damaging paint. And I mean, once we're up here, there's like an inch, inch and a half. This spot here is a little tighter. There's maybe half of an inch, but uh, plenty of room there. Obviously when you're done, you kind of want to deburr it. And I just sprayed some self-etching primer on there just to prevent any sort of you know rust from forming down the road. So throttle bodies, let's talk throttle bodies real quick. This is a Holly, pretty sure it's a 90 millimeter. It's a four bolt drive-by cable throttle body. Now this is an LS6 car intake, which is a three bolt throttle body. So there's an adapter in there, which does add a little bit of extra space. It's probably, oh, I don't know, half of an inch maybe. And because it's adapted up to a 90 millimeter, it almost looks like it's shifted up just a tiny bit. Um, that definitely did not help our hood clearance situation any. I'm wondering if we had like a stock, say 5.3 truck throttle body drive-by cable. It might have been just a tiny bit lower, so we might not have had to cut the hood. But not a huge deal. The hood is cut, the hood now closes, and we're good to move on to the next obstacle. So I did a little bit of looking, and the air intake is going to be the next big challenge that I need to figure out how to sort out. Now, normally on something like this, I'd build an aluminum tube, you know, really what would be ideal on any engine that's naturally aspirated, you want as little restriction as possible. If it's turbocharged, if you're pressurizing air through a tube, you can get away with a smaller diameter, but this is an NA motor and we're shooting for somewhere around 400 horsepower. So I want as big of an intake tube as I could get. Realistically, with the packaging concerns, I'd like to run three and a half inches, but Right now, that's not going to work. And the main reason why is the accessory drive. So let me show you what I mean. This is an LS Simple uh, Serpentine Drive, and it's not specific. I've mentioned this a couple times. It's not specific to an LS swap in an XJ Cherokee. The AC pump is mounted high and wide, and so is the alternator. And the reason why they design in brackets like this is for cars or older vehicles where you've got, you know, the really, really narrow frame rails down below, and you just can't put the accessories down low where they used to go. Uh, specifically, this truck motor in LQ4, normally the AC pump, it would have been way down there on the block, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, I mentioned the intake tube. That is my next challenge. So normally on an XJ LS, they'll come off of here and they'll either go two directions, over here, over here, but basically they'll kind of come in a 90 and swing out a little bit and have the filter mounted either in this corner or in this corner. Like I said, three and a half inch aluminum tube, that's really what would be ideal. But because of this alternator, there's just no way that I'm gonna be able to make that happen. This right here is obviously exhaust tubing, but this is three inch. This is as big as you're possibly gonna be able to fit, you know, allowing room for movement and stuff like that, because you've got some spinning belts and pulleys here. You don't wanna run that tube right up against it. So three inch is about as big as you're gonna be able to get. Now, like I said, that is much less than ideal. I'd really, really like to have three and a half, or I'd love to have four inch. So there's two options or three options basically that we're gonna to have to work with. And I need to talk to the owner and kind of get his opinion on it because ultimately, um, you know, the owner of the vehicle is the one who's paying for all this. I could come up with all the best ideas in the world, but if they cost millions of dollars, it doesn't make any sense. So my proposal, what I'd like to do is this. Take this accessory drive here, take off the AC pump, and then get a stock truck AC pump, because I'm pretty sure that it'll fit down there in the stock location. I've got probably like, I mean, shoot, there's eight or nine, 10 inches maybe between the block and the frame rail. So I'm fairly positive that a stock mount AC location will work. And you can probably barely see right down there that inner groove on the pulley. That's normally where the AC pump would be driven from. So. 
uh, move the pump from here down there, which opens up a ton of space in this area right here, and then get a little bit different configuration of this LS simple bracket, which could, I don't know if they make one, but ideally we take the alternator from here and put it over here. Now, I don't really have, even if I do all that, I don't really have a ton of room to run the air intake this way, especially because the upper radiator hose is going to kind of come through this spot right here. But I'm okay with that because if we can relocate the alternator from here to there, then I'll have a ton of room to be able to make my three and a half inch intake tube come from here, bend over, come through, and then obviously the alternator won't be in the way. We'll stick it down here in the corner. Um, the only option I can see if we're not going to do that, if we have to work with this existing accessory drive, either just run a simple filter on here, which I really don't love that idea because there's a lot of heat and stuff, especially coming from the radiator. You don't want to be sucking hot air into the engine if you can avoid it, or, uh, I'll just have to make it out of three inch. And like I said, uh, I don't really love that idea. Three inches. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it'll work, but does that mean it's ideal? No, not by a long shot. So we'll make some plans there. Uh, the air intake is a ways down the road. My next major thing that I want to tackle is the exhaust, and I'll probably start that on next week's upload. So until then, I'm going to say thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate each and every one of you. Remember, you've got a list of chores that I want you to do. Number one, like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already to the channel, help me out. Also, click the like button on this video, and it really helps the algorithm if you drop a comment down below. So tell me what you think about this project. And also, if you have an XJ that you've LS swapped, let me know what you've done for the accessory drive because I'd really like to see some options. And also, I really want to know if a stock truck AC compressor bracket will fit with these Novak conversion mounts. So uh, let me know what you think there. Like and subscribe. Also, visit TolmanPerformance.com. Get your lightweight hoodie, get your hat, get your t-shirt, and I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for watching.